Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Listen, 23% of businesses fail within the first year. 50% fail within the first five years. Some of the reasons that those businesses fail is because number one, they haven't built the foundation first, which you've heard me say, but part of that foundation is having systems and processes in place, especially if you are an organization that has so many different tiers. You know, you pull back the layers of an onion. Most organizations have that. If you're a solopreneur and you have only one VA, you still have systems and processes that have to be in place in order for you to succeed. So that is what we're going to talk about today, but we're going to talk about it in a unique way because we're going to talk about the impact method that my client, Stephanie Sloan, has created so that she can better help or best help nonprofits, associations, and membership organizations. We're also going to talk today about our time together, working together as me as her coach and her as my client, and how we have really built the foundation for her business and she's going to launch and soar and do incredible things for organizations or to have, I should say, organizational efficiency. Stephanie Sloan, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Hi everyone. I'm so happy to be here. I want to thank Robin for having me on. It's truly a pleasure. She's been wonderful to get to know. I feel like we're spending weekly time chatting with a friend and it's been awesome. So I so appreciate her wisdom and knowledge and pouring into me and um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited to be getting ready to launch. It's always such a, um, a wonderful time, but also terrifying sometimes as well. I'm Stephanie. I'm a systems and process expert. I work with trade associations, nonprofits, and membership organizations to decrease chaos within the organization, optimize and implement processes that are more streamlined, and basically work towards being more organizationally efficient. Yes. Yes. And that is so important. As I said in the intro, so many businesses fail. And I like to blame it on not having a solid foundation. And when we talk about a solid foundation, it's a myriad of things, right? It's your personal brand. It's your website. It's your SEO. It's all of those things that are going to give you this ability to be sustainably successful. But the processes and systems are absolutely key for that. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason is customer service. If we're not making people happy, they're not going to stick around and and continue to be in our communities or support our organization or buy from us. Okay, so Steph, we're going to talk all about all of these things and your impact method specifically. But before we do, can we talk a little bit about us working together and what that experience has been like for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when I started out in this process, I had been, you know, kind of working on niching down into something and I couldn't quite figure out what that thing was. It was very, um, I was working as a tech VA, but I knew that I needed to niche down in order to really dig in. And Robin kind of helped me show a little bit more about like what my past and what my past experiences could bring to the table. And that, that's really where we dug in. It's like, okay, here's what I used to do in the previous life. This is what I'm doing now. And this is where my brain works the best. Like I know this organizational nonprofit space, like it's the back of my hand, because that's what I did before I had kids. And um, then I moved into kind of trying to do something that was more remote. And being a tech VA made sense. I'm a very techie person. Um, but marrying the two was really kind of like, oh, could I do that? And so Robin and I sat down, we, we worked together to figure out what those offers that I might be able to bring to the table, how I could really help and how to package that into something that I could say, okay, this is what I can do for you. And this is what it looks like on paper. And this is how much it costs. <laughs> so mm -hmm. moving into that whole, um, taking a conceptual kind of thing and moving it into, this is the actual nuts and bolts. Robin helped me with positioning in terms of my website and website copy and that kind of stuff. So so Robin really helped me to niche that down, to build out those offers so that I understood exactly what my what I could bring to the table and get that all packaged up and put it into the world, which is what mm -hmm. we're doing. <laughs> which is so what we're doing. And yes. now we're showcasing it here so that yeah. anybody who is listening can actually tap into your resources, which we'll talk about that later. But I think, mm -hmm. Stephanie, for me, 
it has been such a joy wa to watch you go from a place of lack of clarity to mm -hmm. complete confidence in your offers and what you're bringing to the table and and your belief in the fact that you are the expert in this space and you are going to be able to transform so many organizations for the better. And it's funny because I, I think when we first started working together, I mentioned to you the book E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Right. Because every time we talked, I kept thinking, oh my gosh, she could have written this book because <laughs> you know systems and processes so incredibly well. And when we talk about systems and processes, we're talking about standard operating procedures. And we're talking about the tech and tools that go into making sure that those SOPs, standard operating procedures, are efficiently created, implemented, and then running like clockwork for mm -hmm. an organization. And we know that when those things break, the whole organization can be brought to its knees. Yeah. And that could mean just one person being absent for a day that when, when you have something really big or really important going on. So let's dive into that because I, I think, and I'm guilty of this at times as well, you know, starting out, did I have good systems and processes? No, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't think of that, but then the second that I did it, which was pretty quick, because for me, I don't have time for a lot of nonsense. I want to make sure everything's efficient and I'm making it as easy for me as I can. So mm -hmm. when we talk about doing that, it's, it's really transformative in terms of what the potential becomes, but first you have to investigate. So I want you to tell us about your impact method and then how we can start looking at what we need to look at to make sure we're doing things the right way. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the impact method is is really was born out of like, okay, so when you're looking at going into an organization and saying, okay, they might have say three or four bottlenecks that they know they have. So you get called in to say, okay, how can we have a conversation and how can we really drill down into what the real problem is. And so the impact method kind of came out of that. My walking through with a client, how we would go from start, from point A to point B, like in point B being everybody, everything is optimized and it's not always optimized. This is an ongoing process. I will say that just as a point of clarity, because you can't assume that you're going to go in in three months and boom, we're done and everything's great. And you, you don't need to revisit ever. And I actually would recommend every, you know, at least once a year that somebody go back into systems processes and, and have a conversation and deep dive into, is this still working? And I can get into that a little bit more later, but the impact method kind of came out of all of this. So the first step impact is an acronym stands for investigate, map, prioritize, act, codify, and train. And so basically the first stage being investigate, as you said, like you're going into an organization, you're going to sit down with the people who are doing the task. You're going to sit down with leadership. You're going to you're going to understand the overarching mission behind the organization and what they're trying to get at. You can hear about, you know, where things are not working well, and that's really going to be really important and um, something that a lot of organizations and I talk about this in my myths that we'll talk about later, but. You know, people don't really want to be introspective. They kind of want to take a step back and be like, well, um, everything's fine. Nothing to see here. <laughs> you know, especially people who own a certain task, they might feel a little defensive about it. Like, I don't want to talk about how it's not going well, but it's crucial. As you said, a lot of organizations fail and, and this can be a point of failure. So getting in there, having conversations and really digging down into what the actual problem is, which is the investigate portion. And, you know, we'll move on to the mapping portion where we're, we talk about, okay, we have the problem. How do we fix it? And then we go from there. Yeah. And Steph, you use an example in your copy about your grandmother. I think it was your grandmother's rest family recipe or somebody's family recipe. And I think it's the perfect analogy of we do things over and over and over again without understanding why we're doing them or recognizing whether or not it's the most efficient way to do something. Yeah. And I would love for you to share that because I just think it's yeah. a, it's such a great so, way of looking at it. It's funny because that story actually is not my family story, but it's a story that I remember like in a certain class in college, like this was the the one piece of this class that I took away that I will never forget. 
<laughs> and that was a discussion about a family recipe. And basically I do, I do bring this up in some of my resources that, you know, you can have a recipe that is passed down from generation to generation, which most families, there is something that your mother made that her mother made. And so you kind of just go with it. This recipe was for a, a roast beef and basically they would cut the ends off the roast. And that was like the first thing that was done. And then, you know, obviously it was probably seasoned and put in the oven, but it was probably three or four generations later that somebody finally was like, why do we cut the ends off the roast? And the mother didn't know, grandmother didn't know, great grandmother comes out to say, well, my pan was really small because that was all we had. And so the roast never fit in the pan. So I cut the ends off so I could fit it in there. And it's just a great example of organizations that you get in this rote kind of situation where you do the same process over and over again. And a lot of times processes are put in place in a firestorm. Like we got to get this out. This has to go. Donors are waiting. People are waiting for this. And so it's done. But then the next time you do the process, you don't really go back to think, oh, the last time we did this, we were doing it kind of in a firestorm. So we did it quickly without thinking. And then that becomes the process of, you know, a year, two years down the road, you're still doing a process that made no sense, but it was done just because they cut the roast <laughs> to fit the pan. So that's that's one of the analogies I use to really bring home to organizations that it's it's so crucial to go, to do this. It's so crucial to go back and look, especially after events or bigger, you know, projects that just got completed kind of debriefing and doing that final, like, hey, why did we do it this way? And how can we do it better next time? So. Yeah. And I, I think it's so important as business owners too, as well as organizations, like ever for everyone to get curious, like, mm -hmm. because I know even for us, like we've, we've looked at, we've had our podcast process for years, but it, it, periodically we're like, oh, you know what? We could do that more efficiently or, oh, we could do this instead of that. And then it's going to be more smoothly or, you know, because especially when there's more hands touching it than one, right. Yeah. Or more yeah. people than, than just one person. Okay. So we talked about investigate. We talked about map and mapping out is just mapping out the processes and making sure that they're efficient. Well, mapping out is just kind of mapping a solution. So like, solution. okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, where is, what is the solution going to look like? And that part and that step really is where we take a look at other systems like software systems or, you know, a project management system, membership management, donor management, whatever you're using. And we kind of investigate, okay, are there pieces of the system that you're not using? Are there pieces of the system that, that because of a newer feature or what have you, um, do you need to like reinvestigate your process? And that kind of goes back to what you said earlier about being curious, but in, as technology advances, and as you know, it's moving very fast. AI is doing a lot of things. So we really have to be very intentional about going back and saying, okay, um, we've had this system for a year and this is how we're using it, but now they have new features. So we kind of really need to revisit. Maybe we can take this step out or maybe this process can be, tweaks a little bit so that it fits with the system a little bit better. So that's really the mapping part. Okay. And then what about prioritize? How do we prioritize? Well, you really need to work with leadership within the organization. So that's really the discussion that needs to be had is, okay, so here's all the things, what fits within the budget, what fits within the time frame, um, and what makes the most sense in terms of utilizing your staff. A lot of organizations, as you know, smaller nonprofits, you've worked with them, there's bare bone staff, minimal staff. And so when you're talking with leadership, it, it has to be a, a conversation that includes that. And just so that we can come up with the best solution, really prioritizing what makes the most sense to tackle first. Yeah. So Stephanie, before we go to the, the ACT part of the impact method, what are some of the, I guess, objections that people give for not wanting to address the systems and processes? Well, I think there's, like we'd mentioned earlier, a little bit of, you know, nobody wants to be put in the hot seat in terms of like, well, how are your processes? And you could be doing this. You don't really want to, and sometimes it's personal, like this is my process and I've created it and it's fine just the way it is. So there's a little bit of that. Okay. So I mentioned before, and I want to bring this in before we go to the ACT of the impact method, but 
when I read the book, um, E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, and I know I've already said the book, but I really loved this book and it was a real eye opener for me, especially when back in the days when I had my photography business, it changed the whole game for me. And um, he used an example of a woman who had a bakery. So this woman was, you know, working her fingers to the bone, literally kneading mm -hmm. bread and doing, making all of the goods and blah, 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 blah. And then she had no support system. And so all of these things were falling through the cracks, the, the invoicing, the, the banking, the bookkeeping, the, you know, ordering and this, that, and the other were all starting to fall through the cracks because she had no systems and processes in place. Right. And the other thing that was happening was it was only her. So there was no one to back her up if she couldn't right. come to work one day. Right. And that is so, such a big part of everything that you talk about. So I would love for you to like address that. Like what happens when an organization doesn't have a process and system and somebody can't come to work someday? And this is applicable to whether you are a solopreneur or you have, you know, a staff of 10 or a staff of a hundred, it doesn't matter. It's the same principle. Yeah. I mean, it, you're basically flying without a map. Like you, you really have no idea what's happening. It, it, it can be like, as if you're walking through a maze and you have, you know, you're, you're going one a, one way, you get to the end of that and you're like, nope, this isn't how it was done. And so you have to turn around and go back the other way. You're wasting a lot of time. Um, and it can be crucial if it's a crucial period in your organization's, um, you know, timeline. If, if, if you're gearing up for a big event and somebody has, you know, unexpectedly leaves the organization or somebody's not able to come to work for, you know, a day, a week or a month, but it's at that crucial time when your donors are waiting, your sponsors are waiting, it, it can be a real impactful situation to your budget and your bottom line. And what happens is, you know, somebody is left to basically pick up the pieces and try to put together some sort of plan like, okay, so I'm in the back end of the system trying to figure out how we reach out to donors. What was done last year? Well, let me search through the history and see if I can figure out when that email was sent and that kind of thing. So if, if processes aren't documented, that's what happens. If somebody leaves the organization, everything that's in their brain is walking out the door with them. So they might be the only one who planned an event or wrote the emails or, you know, updated the website or understood how to create a new event in on the website. Like I've seen organizations with events from two years ago and they basically are like, well, we don't know how to get in there and change that. So we can't turn it. Yet. So that's where you run into. And it makes you look bad, right? Like you're, you know, on the stage of your, your donors, your members, everybody is kind of wondering what's happening. Like, why are you imploding? And suddenly we're not getting information. The information is old. It's incorrect. I, I made a donation and I haven't received a, a, any kind of response. So those are the kind of things that can really, you know, impact you, not just on the stage in terms of how you look as an organization um, and your perception of your donors and your members, but also just your bottom line. So can really spell the end if if it continues um it can it can be a real problem so and that's what we talk about in the codify section you know um when you are codify you know we all know what that word means but um writing th these things down and actually documenting them and then revisiting them maybe six months to a year later to make sure they're still up to date is crucial because that way if if i leave the organization and I leave behind a well-documented suite of SOPs, anybody can step in and be like, okay, this is how it's done. This is what we've done in the past. This is what we're continuing to do. They might tweak it as they move forward, but at least the bare bones are there so that everybody understands and can move forward. And this, this works for volunteers too. Like you have an organization that relies heavily on volunteers and as a volunteer, I, I raise my hand and I say, I want to come in and help, or I want to do X, Y, Z at this event. And you get there and there's nobody there to tell you how to do what you need to do. Um, so you're either going to jump in and just, and a lot of people aren't comfortable there. They're like, I'm not sure exactly how to get plugged in. So having some sort of onboarding process or SOP suite for volunteers as well is crucial because then you can, you know, we have somebody who raises their hand and says, I want to help. And that is so invaluable. As you know, in a nonprofit space, 
bare bones staff, volunteers are welcomed. But if you can't get somebody plugged in like immediately and they feel like, hi, I'm here and I'm doing the thing that I want to do, I'm contributing and I'm loving it. If that doesn't happen within the first couple of weeks of their raising their hand and volunteering, then they're kind of like, well, do you need me? Do, should I just leave? And mm -hmm. you never want that to be the feeling. So it's mm -hmm. just crucial. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know, an example I can give too is when there were bylaws or, you know, some guiding document that was created at the onset of an organization, but it hasn't been looked at. And therefore the board members don't know what the expectations are. Okay. And if the board members don't know what the expectations are from a financial contribution, time contribution, whatever that is, mm -hmm. that's going to trickle down to the entire organization as well as the reflection on the outside. And I know right. you talk a lot about like that, that introspective piece, which goes back to, I think, investigative is mm -hmm. where, you know, you have to look internally at the organization or your business to be able to appropriately, effectively, efficiently project that image or persona that you want the outside world to have. So you, you've right. got to mirror it from the inside out. And yeah. I think that's, that's so important. And without codifying you you have no documentation you have no proof of what is supposed to happen to make yeah. things run smoothly absolutely i mean and that introspective piece is uncomfortable you know i mean and that that is like you work with a lot of business owners like being uncomfortable is like the name of the game right like if you're not uncomfortable then you're not growing or moving or anything you know and that's one of the myths that that i touch on in my resources like oh well SOPs and things and documentation, that's just for larger organizations. We don't need that. We're just a couple of people. Well, if you want to grow to be even instead of two people, four people, like if you want to double your size, you still need to have that documentation. It, it's just, it's crucial for every aspect, but yeah. But And Stephanie, something that I think is so important too is retention. So you, you touched on the volunteer retention um, right. or board member retention or member retention, whatever. But if you're a solopreneur, it, that is where your client retention comes in. Because right. if you're not serving them well, if you haven't made the process easy for them, mm -hmm. then they're not going to refer you. And right. they're not likely to stay around. So it's really important to have the documentation, to have everything run smoothly so that you you serve well <laughs> and you look good at the same right. time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And retention is a huge aspect of any nonprofit, right? Donor retention, member retention, as you mentioned, board retention, like, and staff retention. Like nobody wants to stick around in a place where there's confusion all the time. And that's one of the things on my website. It's like, it's no, I think it's no fun to be working in a dysfunctional organization. It, it's not. It being dysfunctional in any aspect of life is not fun. You know, organizationally, it can be, it just, people are miserable. The, the fact that you have an overarching mission is lost. Your mission will not be important to your staff, your board, or anybody if there's dysfunction and inefficiency. It's just no fun. It's all great because we're focused on the mission. We can move forward with new initiatives and we can we can really grow that whole reason we started in the first place. And being mission-oriented is a wonderful gift, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing to have an organization that has a beautiful mission. And everybody's moving towards it. But if you're living and working in dysfunction, whether it's from the board all the way down to your staff, nobody's nobody's happy. So it's mm -hmm. it's not really fun. And mission yeah. go out the window. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the last one is train. And I'm assuming that means making sure everyone is aware. Yeah. Yeah, that is all it is. I mean, it's not like this great in in in-depth thing. It's just, I mean, we're gonna take that that SOP and make sure everybody understands not only where it is, but how it's used. And then, you know, training people on an ongoing basis of, you know, and that kind of circles back to revisiting. So training can be ongoing, especially, but yeah, it's just basically making sure everybody's on the same page so that we can, we can be happy. <laughs> uh -huh. And functional. And functional. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And that everybody has access should that person that is the lead on this right. SOP not be there, right. now everybody still knows what to do and how to do it. 100%. And I think when you mentioned that earlier about how sometimes, you know, we get competitive or possessive about the things that we're responsible for, right. especially in a, in an environment like that. And 
if we, we have to like change that thought process that I could not be here someday. So I have to, I have to do this and share this and, and support the entire organization in order for it to function, because if it's not functioning and the mission, mission isn't accomplished, then there's no revenue. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. And, you know, it, that kind of goes back to that organizational culture of, of, you know, being mission oriented. Like if I'm mission oriented and I'm really feeling that, then of course I want to document everything. Of course I want everything to be written down so that, you know, if I'm not here or if I move on or whatever happens to me, then the organization can move forward. So mm -hmm. um, that's really the culture behind that. Yeah. Yeah. So stuff we're about out of time, but I would love for you to touch on just briefly, like cost implications of this, because mm -hmm. I think it can cost money to actually do this, to have the systems and processes and all of that. Mm -hmm. But the ROI is huge if yeah. you do it. So I would love for you just to touch on that just briefly for anybody who's sitting there thinking, yeah, well, I can't afford that, but you kind of have to. Yeah. I mean, look, any organization that's running, I'll just use one small example. And there's there's other ways you can talk about this from a staff perspective in terms of time and resources, which certainly we could go into depth. We could talk for 20 minutes on that alone. But from a systems perspective, like if you, it, you're a good portion of your tech budget is typically going to be your, your CRM, your member management, your donor management, right? But if you're not utilizing that to the fullest of its capacity, or your processes that you use before you adopted that system don't really match up. So it's just not efficient. It, it Maybe there's automations you could throw in there that would reduce staff time and things like that. So all of that costs money up front, but the the end result of, it, of efficiency and utilizing that system to its fullest, I mean, there's nothing like having a system that costs $5,000 a year and you're using a third of it. So if you're looking at that from a budget perspective, well, that's money on the table right there. So we could go into a lot of detail on that, but that's one of the things that I, I really like to hone in on. It's like these things cost a lot of money. They're like the main thing that your organization would need to spend budget-wise in terms of tech, depending upon what system you use, um, whether it's a monthly cost or it's a yearly cost. But if you're not utilizing that, then it's really one place that I would say dig in first um, and really kind of figure out if there's, different features that you could utilize, or if you could marry them with an existing system or process with an automation to make life easier for everybody. So. Yeah. Because time is money. Oh, absolutely. And then, and I love that you brought in the systems because I've seen this with so many of my clients where they have all of these systems mm -hmm. and or tools and they're not using them. Right. Or they have, they have multiple and they do the same thing and they're it, it's just scattered, it's inefficient, and it causes confusion internally right. and externally. So right. I, I love that you address all of these things. So before we close out, I would love for you to tell everybody about your free resource, because no matter what type of organization you're in, but especially if you're in the nonprofit realm, you need to have this ebook. Yeah, it's an ebook. It's basically called Six Myths About SOPs and, and why your organization can't afford to ignore them. Um, it talks just you know, high level view of six things that a lot of organizations like to push back on in terms of, oh, we don't need this. We, this is not something we want to spend our time or resources on. Um, but I go into depth about like why it's so important. And a lot of the things we touched on today, just to, um, to kind of, you know, I sort of gleaned a, a few things. You heard me mention about the, the a few myths that, that I talked about, but so that would be a free resource. You can get it on my website. So you can get it on my social media as well. So, and I think Robin will link it in the show notes, but yeah, download it, take a look at it, shoot me an email with any questions or discussion that you want to have, or you can find me on LinkedIn as well. And you can, you can also start up a conversation with me there. I'd love to chat about it. Cause I like to geek out about this stuff, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, the other thing about the ebook is you give strategic steps to actually take. And so I think that is, that's where the gold is in that. Yeah. We need to understand the myths. We need to, to look at your, um, refutal of rebuttal, rebuttal, refutal. What's the right <laughs> word there? I, I'm not using the right word. 
I like them both, but you know. yeah, whatever it is, but you give that explanation as to why that myth is false and what you need to know about it. But then those strategies that you actually give to actually take action and action is, we didn't touch on that necessarily in your impact method, but listen, if you don't take action, you're going nowhere, but it has yeah. to be positive, intentional action. And you give those strategies for people to be able to do that. So yeah, I tried I, to do like a high level, quick and dirty. Here's three things you can do that don't cost money that you could, you know, talk to, um, you know, one or two staff members and just kind of like, okay, let's put this together and put it in place as quickly as we can just to, to shore that, that section up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very generous of you because people will see transformation just from the tips that you're providing or the strategies you're providing in that ebook. So mm -hmm. I will put the link to the ebook in the show notes. You guys don't have to go look farther, but you can also connect with Stephanie on LinkedIn, as she said. And mm -hmm. I highly encourage everyone to take a look at your systems and processes. Mm -hmm. Where can you decrease cost? Where can you increase efficiency? Because the more you focus on this, the more smooth your organization is going to run, the better customer service you have, the better client retention rates you have, the more ROI you're going to experience. And it's just all around the best thing to do. Absolutely. You, Stephanie, any other, oh, actually share your website. It's jlcsystems.com. So you can find me there. Um, newly put, launched website. <laughs> and it's beautiful. It's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. So go check that out, everybody. Make sure you give her a little bit of love because she shared a great amount of value today. And I you just did. want to support her. But yeah. also, if you appreciated the information, please be sure to share it with your teams, your colleagues, anybody else you know in industries where this could be helpful, especially nonprofits. And please leave a rating and review because that is, helps us get into more ears to help more organizations be successful. And that is our mission at the end of the day, to create that ripple effect of good in the world. Thank Absolutely. you all again for being here, and we will see you next time. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time, so I truly appreciate you joining me. And be sure and visit the website, therobingrahams.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.